So um, that's it. That's all I did here to accomplish this sleeve. All I did was I took the sleeve layer. I have the line art layer that is the entire fold on top that's going directly in there. And then I've got the color art layer, which is the fill. And I've got the fill being cut off with the skin color. Now, if you're really uh, giving yourself a huge challenge by doing colored lines like I did on this one, uh, then you have the added complexity of needing to be able to change the color of the line when this thing is at that position. And there is a way of doing this as well. So just to show you, because it's not terribly difficult, it's the same concept again. What I'm doing here is I'm taking a copy of my lower arm, which is um, you know the same lower arm layer with the skin color, and I am cutting off this lower arm layer with a cutter. And I've got this color override module, and what the color override module is doing is it's, um, it's actually replacing the skin color, so the skin outline. So the skin outline starts out as this dark brown color. So what I'm saying is cut off the lower arm where the sleeve's overlapping it and figure out where that outline color is when the sleeve is overlapping it. And then take that color, out, color outline and give it a new color. And so if you click on that color there or you click on the uh, color dropper, inside this wheel, what you can do is you can just find the same color pot. So I find my skin shirt color pot there. And then you take this eyedropper, click on it, and then you can click directly on top of that one. And then what it's going to do is it's going to replace the skin outline color with the new color, which is the same as that shirt outline. And so when you do that, what you're doing is you're taking that um, the arm layer and you're saying replace the line on the lower arm layer with this color when the sleeve is overlapping. So I've got the lower arm layer going into the right side of the cutter now because it's the thing that's being cut. I've got the sleeve going into the left side of the cutter because the sleeve is what's telling it where to cut it, the mask. And uh, so if I enable that, then so far I don't have anything yet because I haven't told it what to do. So after you figure out where you want to apply the thing, what you'll do is you're going to replace the color. Poof, I replace that. And, um, and now you can see in the preview mode it shows up with the right color. And if you also render that out, then we do see it rendered with the correct color. So you see this one here is rendered with that brown color. And then the sleeve up here is rendered with the uh, purple color. So that's it, and that was a, a lot of information to give you in one go. And remember that if you want to, and you should, you should also have a, another drawing that is facing the other direction. So right now I have a drawing that's facing downwards to represent the downwards direction. But um, if you want to, and you should, then you'll take this sleeve layer. And uh, where did you go, sleeve layer? Oh, this one right here. OK, so I'll take my sleeve layer. And I'll just go to, an, to the next frame in my timeline to make this easier. And I will search for where this is in my timeline. And then I'll duplicate the drawing so that I have a copy of exactly the same thing. So drawing, duplicate, drawing. And now I'll go back in this one and I'll modify it so that the drawing is facing the other way. So you can either redraw it or you can um, just modify the position of this one. But to make my life easier, I'm just going to redraw it. And you can turn on your onion skin so you can see the position of the original drawing. And then from here, you want to draw a copy of that arm that's facing inwards like this. So in other words, you want to have a copy of it that you're, where you're looking up the arm. So I've kind of got this looking like that. And you might want to close it all the way. Or did I have it? I had it slightly open on one side. So you can kind of do the same thing from the other perspective and then um, what I would do here is I would take this one remember this has to be completed in your line art layer so I will just take my stroke tool and I'll convert this for simplicity's sake I'll convert this to a brush stroke or you can work directly with brush strokes if you want to and then I'll take my stroke layer I'll draw a stroke across and then I can fill this in 
with that. And um, I can take the same color art layer and I can just keep the sort of envelope shape from the other one. But I will um, take this one here. Let's just, just for the sake of simplicity here, easy, easy way of doing this. I'm just going to erase the bottom of this thing. And then I can go back to my line art layer and I can kind of, this is what I did before, it's kind of cheating, but I can just copy and paste the line art layer in there and I'll just get rid of the lines. And then I can take my contour editor, grab a couple of contour points on there, or I can just grab the whole line, or I can draw it. You know, there's like multiple ways of doing it. You just um, draw this thing. So I've got my brush tool. I can resize my brush with the O shortcut, and I can just draw this so that it's long enough. It doesn't have to be perfect because you're just using it as a mask, remember? So I'll just draw that like that and fill it in. So now I've got my upward version of that sleeve. And if we take a look at what it looks like in the uh, camera view, then um, yeah, I may, I may have drawn a little bit too big here. So if I have drawn it too big, then I can use my contour editor. Just make sure I'm on my line art tool. And as long as I'm on that same drawing layer, as long as I still have that drawing layer selected, I can do the modification directly in here. Or maybe I just want to take my whole select tool and then just kind of make this guy a little bit smaller so that it matches there. And the, um, the uh, drawing uh, bounding box there is kind of large because it's including the stuff that doesn't show. So then I've got that matching there. So that's all you want to do. Turn off my onion skin, double check everything is fine. And uh, you know, if it's not fine, then I can just go back and make some additional modifications. It's kind of uh, bouncing around there because I have my snap on, so I might want to turn the snap off to make it easier. And if I go back and see something like this and see, ah, oh, that's not quite working there, then I can go back to my drawing view and I can just um, draw in the spot where it's not working. So I D for dropper, O to draw with my brush tool bigger, and then I can just snap this in here. And now that's going to work just fine. So I hope you see why it's useful to have the downward facing and the upward facing. When you have the downward facing, it looks like you're looking down at the arm, and then the upward facing is when, when the arm is coming towards you. And it's a subtle distinction, but it's, to, it's important to have that different sleeve for the different shots. So that's it. Um, that's all we need to know about working with sleeves and working with folds. And um, this is kind of an advanced sleeve. A lot of... Um, a lot of studios will not have the ability to animate the position of the sleeve over time. They'll just have the sleeve drawn directly on there. But, uh, you know, it's up to you what you want to do. So I hope this gave you some ideas of things to do, and I'll catch you guys with another tip next week.